Hey, what's going on guys? So this is the first day being back from California that I can actually make my own food, start tracking my macros and get back into my daily just rhythm and routine, which I really do enjoy doing. So I woke up about an hour ago, right now it's 8 a.m. I had uh, a coffee and I used some of that pumpkin spice, like coffee creamer that I bought yesterday. I added a serving of that in there, some Splenda. I kind of just got, got some work done. I'm kind of catching up from being away from a long time. There's a bunch of emails and stuff for the business and then cleaning my house and stuff. Uh, so this morning's gonna be pretty busy and then throughout the day I'll show you the rest of my meals. But like I said in my last video, I'm starting to do kind of like a moderate bulk. So today's macros are gonna be 80 grams of fat, 450 grams of carbs and 250 grams of protein. And then over the course of the next couple of weeks, fat will probably go up a little bit, carbs will go upwards of 500 grams, but protein's gonna stay consistent at 250 grams whether I'm bulking or cutting. So I'll show you what I'm having for breakfast. Uh, even though I've been out of the field for about a week now, the Army's been serving us you know, Army food and if you guys are in the military, or maybe you know, Army food may or may not be real food. Like some of the food options you get, not the highest quality, portions are definitely really small, but Army eggs are one thing I will not eat. Army eggs look like minced garlic. So one of the things I had to make for breakfast was eggs this morning. So right here, uh, you guys know one of my go-to protein sources is eggs. So this is two whole eggs, one cup of egg whites with a little bit of sugar-free or reduced sugar ketchup on there. And then this is two servings of Frosted Flake clusters. So it just has like some crunchy medley in there I picked up last night. Half a cup of almond milk and then 126 grams of banana. So this is a little over 100 grams of carbs pre-workout. I got legs today. Uh, it's typically what I like to keep it in. This digests very fast. I can go to the gym in about an hour and feel fine. All right, guys. So while I was gone, I posted this picture of some training we were doing when we were out in California. And someone asked the question of why did I not choose a normal job like after college? And there's a few reasons behind this. I'll kind of explain it. For one, the Army paid 100% of my tuition to go to school. Uh, and the deal was they pay for your school. You get four years back to the Army. Pretty good deal. Uh, so I'm debt free from school right now. That was kind of like the initial reason. And then, you know, I saw so many benefits, the leadership abilities and positions you get to be in, um, the sense of serving your country. And it's just a, a great place to start working. Right after college, you have a job set up and you can learn a lot from the people around you. It's not for everyone, but it is a great place to be from. Meaning, you know, you might say, hey, you're an infantry officer. How can you apply that to the civilian sector? kind of just to put it in perspective for you. So I'm also the unit movement officer for my company. So every company has one officer in charge of moving all the stuff. So we went to California this past month. I was responsible for moving 100 people, over $100 million worth of equipment, 3,000 miles, and I did that without losing anything or breaking anything. So it's a pretty good resume bullet. Um, and the things you learn in the military or unlike any other the leadership positions you're put in, you can't do, you know, just getting a regular college degree and be put in a position like that. The military is something different, somewhere where you can really start building a resume and uh, some really good qualities to, to use later on in life. I've literally never seen him this tired. Ever since I picked him up yesterday around 4 p.m., he's been sleeping the entire time. <laughs> hey. Hey, he's beat. All right, so NTC absolutely crushed my mobility. Uh, coming back into yesterday's workout for deadlifts, I could feel my hips were really tight and getting seated properly down in the deadlift just wasn't comfortable for me and I felt myself falling forward. So this is something I picked up from Bryce Lewis when I did a uh, Skype interview with him a couple months back and I incorporated it into pre-workout squats and deadlifts and it really did make a difference and something I'm gonna start doing consciously again just to get warmed up and ready because I have not been putting as much emphasis on pre-workout mobility and saving it and reserving it primarily for post-workout or off days. Something I'm now transitioning back into is a low bar squat after going back to high bar squat for the past couple of months. Primary reason is it's more comfortable for me for one, I can maneuver more weight. So, you know, my end state or my goal is to maneuver as much weight as possible, as many times as possible. And the way my body is built and constructed, my skeletal composition, uh, the center of balance just works a lot better for me for low bar squats. So it's something you're gonna see more often in videos. And hopefully I can start 
moving more weight under the squat. So I did a five by five, working up to 335 on squats. Now, endurance is coming back. This is my third leg workout after getting back from the field. And I did four sets of extensions, four sets of leg curls, and I finished off with barbell lunges, which is by far one of my favorite exercises. So I'll either use barbell lunges or the leg press for a finisher. Uh, and I'm going to start doing a lot more volume. My legs is something I really want to bring up, especially during this balk and getting a lot of volume hypertrophy, but still incorporating some strength training because I'm going to also use this bulk to get stronger as well. So, I mean, it seems implied, but I want to get a lot stronger than I was. All right, so I'm starting to feel good again, like being back at the gym and being back on my rhythm. And, uh, you know, I, I talk about sometimes setting the conditions for success. I know here some people say, like, if you're a true athlete, you know, you can go into the gym and you can hit your PR anytime. Or you can go in and hit a workout no matter what condition you're in or how you're feeling. But I'm a strong believer in setting the conditions. So, you know, pre-workout meal, pre-workout rituals, uh, getting enough sleep, sleep the night prior, all that kind of stuff goes into how much success and uh, kind of the outcome of your workout that day. If any of you guys have dogs, this is like one of the best treats for a dog. So a deer antler, they don't splinter, they don't break, they literally last forever. Uh, I had one for him before, but I think he buried it. So this is like 14 bucks, but that will last. Sit, sit. Good boy, sit. All right, so for lunch, I'm gonna make some cornflake breaded chicken. So this is just 10 ounces of raw chicken. Um, I typically add about two ounces if I'm gonna make it raw, because most of the time I weigh my meats after they're cooked. So what I'm gonna do is just dip this in a little bit of flour. I'm not counting this, this is just probably an eighth of a cup. Um, I'm probably not gonna use all of that. So dip it in the flour first, and then the egg wash, which is just one egg, a little bit of water. And then this is one serving of cornflakes mashed up. And I'll just bake it for probably 30 to 45 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of this beer can chicken seasoning on top. A little bit more flavor. I'm absolutely starving. So while I wait for the chicken to be done, I'm going to try some of these buff bakes. I already tried them, actually. They're really good. But right here is half a serving of the snickerdoodle. This is a uh, almond butter. Almond butter is one of my favorites. And then this right here is half a serving of the chocolate chip peanut spread. So overall, it's really just one serving, 14 grams of fat, seven carb, five fiber, 11 protein. And then this is on an everything bagel by Thomas. So I ended up just putting this chicken on some spring mix with a little bit of Bolt House Ranch. Parmesan cheese, and then some of this French's Dijon honey mustard. So I have this salad here for lunch, and then for dessert, I'm gonna have one of these skinny cows, the salted caramel pretzel. The macros on this is nine grams of fat, 17 grams of carbs, and two grams of protein. All right, so right now, I'm going to get a haircut at Great Clips. Uh, I know a lot of other YouTubers, they have like their, their typical barber that they always go to. But, uh, nope, not me. I just got great clips. It's quick, it's easy, and then there's also this really cool app that I use. So, I never end up waiting in lines. So you can just check in. Like right now, there is a zero minute wait where I'm at, but I checked it anyways. I just wait till I'm like five minutes away, and then go. All right guys, so right now it is 3.20. I'm gonna fill in some carbs with one of these Lenny and Larry oatmeal raisin cookies. Cause tonight I'm making spaghetti squash for dinner so carbs will be a little lower and this will help hit 60 more grams of carbs. Six grams of fiber, eight grams of fat, and 16 grams of protein. Also wanted to point out that I really appreciate the support you guys are showing now that I'm back and putting videos up. And even when I was gone, the support you guys were showing, absolutely crazy. Uh, and now that I hit 20,000 subscribers last night, I've been getting messages all day. So I really appreciate you guys and you know all the support and encouragement you guys show me. So I'm gonna eat this and then here in a little bit start making dinner. All right, so for dinner I am trying something new and experimenting with spaghetti squash. So let me show you what I got going on right here. So in the oven I've been baking the squash for about 30 minutes now at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, what I had to do is cut it in half and cutting it in half is a lot harder than I thought it would be. It took like four attempts and slamming it down on the cutting board. And then I scraped down the inside, like the seeds and the gunk, 
and then I put it face down in a pan with uh, about a quarter cup of water, help it steam a little bit. So 30 minutes at 400 degrees, it should be done here soon. And then on the side here cooking, I have 99% lean ground turkey uh, with an onion here that I browned first. So that's gonna go along with the spaghetti squash. And then I'm gonna mix in about a serving and a half of marinara sauce and then two servings of fat-free ricotta cheese. All right, so here is the final product. It's, it's decent. Uh, spaghetti squash is like my first time ever having it. It's kind of like bland, but when you add in the ricotta cheese, I threw in some Parmesan cheese as well. A uh, total of six ounces of the turkey breast with the onion and then the marinara sauce. It, it has some flavor, but uh, it's not exactly like pasta. But if you're like dieting or low carb, I just wanted to try it out. I would recommend it. It's definitely pretty filling. Uh, so this plate, I'll have the macros on the screen a lot lighter than if I was using, you know, regular pasta. So I'm going to eat this right now. It is 5 p.m. and I have one more meal. All right, guys, to finish off tonight's macros, I had a little bit of a sweet tooth. So this is three of these Chobani pumpkin spice Greek yogurts. Um, I picked these up at the store for a dollar a piece. So the macros are three grams of fat, 15 grams of carbs, and 12 grams of protein per. So three of those in there, one diced up banana, and then one serving of chocolate chips. And then I have two servings of these Tostitos oven baked scoops. So 50% less fat, they're pretty good, they're very light. And I picked up some fresh pico de gallo at HEB. So kind of like fun snack foods, it's typically what I like having at night. And then to finish off the macros for the day, I ended up with 80 fat, 444 grams of carbs with 38 grams of fiber, and 244 grams of protein. So pretty much spot on, six grams off of carbs, six grams off of protein, but really close. It's crazy how much better I feel, like my stomach and just overall well-being, eating the foods I want, healthier food options, fresher food options, now as opposed to last week when I was eating all army food and stuff that's just very preserved and processed. Like I just feel a million times better. So that wraps up this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys in that next video.